What's happening, you guys? Alright, today is the 21st of March, Thursday evening. Uh, we are currently in an area that I am very rarely ever at. That is southbound, uh, Interstate 25, in between Albuquerque and Las Cruces. Uh, we're almost to Las Cruces now. Actually, I just got through going through Radium Springs. No, and I got to thinking about it. Uh, is the movie Cars, the the fictitious town there was called Radiator Springs, and it got me to wonder if Radium Springs is the basis of the, or the, the inspiration for that uh, that fictitious town's name. I don't know. I always, I mean, because I'd seen that movie, but I always kind of pictured that town being in Arizona, like Kingman or somewhere, not here, so, I don't know, uh, maybe you guys can help on that, uh, if someone knows something about that, or I'll have to research that later on, alright, uh, so what are we doing here, uh, alright, so I just finished a delivery at the Walmart Distribution Center in Los Lunas, which is about 20 mile drive south of Albuquerque, uh, this afternoon, um, while there I got asked about um, basically repowering a load over here at the TA in Las Cruces. Uh, talk about later, uh, talk a little later where that one's going, but yeah, they wanted help repowering that one. It's uh, what you call an expedited load. I don't know what's so expedited about it though. It's not due where it's going until the 23rd and well, if I had the clock to work with, I could have it there tomorrow, but uh, I don't think I have the clock to get it there. I, I'll have to double check when I get, you know, when I get over there and uh, start doing the swap. Um, uh, the shuttle driver supposedly is already disconnected from the trailer, so it should just be a matter of me dropping the trailer and then go hook to, uh, go find and hook to the other one and pre-trip it and then take off with it. Uh, pretty much so All right, so This trucker up here this flatbedder up here uh, up ahead. It's almost getting ready to pass by the cop up here So there's a fucking moron So now uh, right over here by radium springs uh, Evidently someone blew a super single tire. I don't know if that way uh, there was a truck on the right shoulder right past the on-ramp there I don't know if that was the same truck because uh, it was definitely a super single carcass on the uh, in the middle of the, tra uh, the number one lane, which is the one I'm leaving right now. And it was only like, not even barely a mile past that where the guy was stopped. But it looked like he had duels on both of his track, both his tractor and his trailer. So I don't know, but he was on the shoulder. I moved over to the left to. Uh, give him space and this freaking moron up here decides to pass me on the right and uh, right by where the guy's at and I'm like what the hell are you thinking why would you do that it's like I moved over a little bit early that way I knew that way I knew for sure he'd be able to see the guy up there and his stupid ass still goes and passes on the right like a fucking idiot right so the guys uh I don't care if you're in a truck or a car there is a damn good reason why truckers usually always move, uh, any good trucker who uh, has any business being in a truck will move left for right shoulder traffic. Now mind you, you shouldn't be on the right shoulder at all unless you have a damn good reason to be there. Uh, stopping to take a piss or getting something out of your fridge is not a reason. Um, you have no business being there if that's what you're there for. But. If you have a mechanical breakdown, and that was because I think his, uh, I think that guy's hood was open, and he had his triangles out on top of it. Um, you know, move over. All right, you can have an inattentive driver drift over into that you know, into that area and actually crash into them. You could have the the per, uh, some of the uh, one or more occupants of whatever that vehicle is there possibly outside the vehicle or they might get out of their vehicle at the same time you're trying to pass by and I was uh, yeah I actually passed right by a truck versus pedestrian uh, or 
kind of, I guess you would call it that, uh, incident scene on a live stream I did a few, uh, two or three years ago. Uh, it was a UPS truck. The guy, uh, the guy on the shoulder was in a car. He had a, a tire problem. He stopped on the shoulder to take a look at what the problem was, but he got between his car and the travel lane. And UPS driver was coming up. I don't know if the UPS driver was just not paying attention or just not permitted to move over by the other traffic. But yeah, he ended up hitting and killing the guy. Alright, so that's one of the reasons. Um, Scotty, your, your suicide by truck attempt case. Even though that woman was, uh, I don't think was part of, uh, was in any vehicle nearby. Um, well, I have heard of it where people will get out of their truck or car or whatever and will intentionally just go right into the, you know, the path of an, uh, of an approaching vehicle. Um, also, you know how many times we've had someone on the right shoulder suddenly pull out in front of us? And we have to either slam on the brakes or uh, suddenly move over and or actually hope there's an opportunity for us uh, to safely move over. Uh, yeah, it's, and when it's a truck that does it to you, it's even worse because if a truck rear ends another truck, the guy who's doing the rear ending is probably going to die. And it's not even going to be his fault because the truck on the shoulder pulled out in front of them. And uh, it probably might not have given them any kind of uh, any option but to crash into them. Uh, you know, but if, if it's a car that pulls out in front of you, and actually I know somebody uh, who, uh, who I used to work with uh, who was killed in exactly this manner, he pulled right out in front of somebody who was already in the lane and at higher speed and they rear-ended him really hard. He didn't have his seatbelt on, and he went through the windshield and was killed. So, yeah, anytime there's someone on the right shoulder, get your ass out of that right lane if you can. Uh, some of the states are even adopting, uh, uh, re revising their move, uh, slow down or move over laws now, where they don't care who it is on the right shoulder. It doesn't matter if it's emergency responder or just any Joe Schmo. If somebody's there at all, you're, there's an expectation for you to either move over or slow down. And this guy didn't either. Okay, so uh, we're gonna, the, the TA, you can see they're on my map view now. Um, now, the more direct route would be to take US-70 straight across. But see, uh, even right here, because I think the construction, this sign right here says US-70 West. Use I-25 to I-10. Alright, so, but in a truck, uh, Las Cruces does not want through truck traffic going through town. So, even when they don't have stuff going on through there, they're not supposed to be going through there unless you have a good reason to be over there. Um, just trying to pass through from here over to I-10 or something is it's not a good reason. So, um, yeah, either way, we're going to have to go down all the way to that kit. Uh, we are about seven miles away from I-10 right now, and then it's about about six more miles or something like that from there to the, the exit where the TA and pilot are at. It's, yeah, it's, I, I, I can't remember the exit number on I-10. It's uh, for I-25. I want to say 145, 146. I think it would be 142. I don't even remember. But... Uh, the truck stops, I believe, are off of exit 139. So I'm kind of adding the numbers up. I don't, of course, you guys know I don't use GPS. What you see right there is what I see. That's how I navigate. Um, Alright. So, how did everything go with the trip down to uh, Los Lunas? Last video you saw, possibly, well, hopefully you saw, was my delivery on uh, my pickup video in uh, Albany, Oregon. That was that uh, it was that frozen veggie load. That's the one I just delivered uh, today in Los Lunas. Um, yeah, I went, uh, that actually uh, went pretty well. I, I ran that load from Albany over to um, Hebron, Idaho. 
that was over 600 miles. Uh, I don't remember the exact miles, but it, yeah, it was over 600. So I was at a quality day. And then the next shift, I ran from Haber 90 all the way down to Gallup, New Mexico. Now it was a 660 mile shift. And while there, um, yeah, in fact, I ended up stopping at the Walmart since it's right there off of Highway 491, which is the one I was coming down. And you know, was, and I was kind of short on clock to work with anyway, so I was like, yeah, I'll just park here. You know, if there's anything I might decide I want to get from Walmart, it's right there. Um, not like I was really hungry at all, but um, the evening uh, I ended up going over to Applebee's. Decided I would have a drink or two. Yeah, I, I'm a casual drinker. I don't like getting drunk, but you know, I decided to just have a couple of blue moons. Maybe watch some sports events there. Uh, Angels versus Royals. I was kind of watching part of that, and then but the uh, Celtics game was on there also. Uh, I think it was Milwaukee Bucks against them, if I remember right. I don't remember. I think it might have been them. And then there was a NCAA tournament game. I, I think it was a tournament. I don't, I don't follow college basketball, so. But it looked like it was the first four, whatever you call it. Yeah, I guess the opening. It was Grambling State versus Montana State. That's all I can tell you. But. Yeah, you anyway, know, I'm hanging out there watching all that stuff, and then uh, yeah, there was a, I ended up uh, chit-chatting with uh, another guy who was over there who sat a, who was a couple of chair, uh, stools over from me. Um, originally, I wasn't talking at all. But I was receptive to talking, but um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I just it, you know, it kind of varies with what people are doing. Um, and I'm not always the greatest at breaking the ice with conversation either. Like there was a lady who was next to me, I got, not like I'm interested in doing anything with her. I'm a happily married guy, man. Uh, but, you know, and this is common what I, what I see when I'm at a sports bar like that. A woman's up at the, at the bar and they're always on their, like, playing around on their phone or whatever. I'm like... I usually take it as uh, they aren't interested in socializing or they have a uh, family uh, already or whatever. So I don't, I'm, you know, even if I was single, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be hitting on someone like that. But I'm, I'm yeah, like I said I'm married and I uh, wouldn't be interested in doing that anyway. Um, regardless, um, yeah, I ended up being uh, this guy who's a couple of. Uh, so, uh, a couple of spots over, uh, stools over there, though. He started talking to the bartender briefly about something, and uh, I kind of, kind of got yeah, a little bit on, involved. I think they were kind of talking about kids and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay. So I got in on that conversation a little bit, and then me and the, the guy ended up having a good uh, long chit chat conversation. Um, yeah, his name's Chi, and uh, yeah, I was, yeah. I'm, he was telling me he was from Santa Fe, and you know, here in New Mexico. And yeah, I was telling him I'm from uh, California, and uh, yeah, I'm a trucker and all that. So we had a good conversation about, man, there's a lot of cars getting off the freeway here. Holy crap. All right, and these on ramp cars. I got this other this cop coming up. There's lights on as well. Is that even a cop? I didn't, I didn't look like a trooper or anything like that. I was kind of curious, what exactly is that? Interesting. Uh, yeah, anyway, that was, it, it was actually a good conversation, but uh, I'm going to say, because I do get a little bit wary of talking too much, to, like kind of monopolizing conversations or kind of becoming annoying to people because I don't shut up or something. So... I, I'm aware of that, so I will sometimes, uh, yeah, hey, I, I'll ask questions and try to get the other person to talk, and uh, I don't know, he was a little bit more on the quiet side, uh, as far as, uh, I mean, we have, well, we have plenty of good conversation, but um, it, it was, it was pretty evident he was more interested in hearing my stories and stuff than me hearing his, and 
I don't know, I can't, you know, he, uh, I told him about my YouTube channel, actually, he might, uh, he might end up becoming a subscriber, I don't know if he's on, uh, if he's already done so, or, so, gee, if you, uh, if you are already, if you're watching this, uh, yeah, I was, I enjoyed the conversation, uh, yeah, it was, you're, you're a good dude, I, yeah, I had a fun time chatting with you, well, like I say, it's, uh, not gonna lie, <laughs> it just, I, I, I tend to feel bad if I end up taking uh, too much of that conversation over and or trying to you know trying to come up with whatever to talk about sometimes and and feel like I, I, I could be overstepping or something so uh, yeah we had yeah we the car yeah, I don't know we talked about like uh, my health problems I think he had uh, we talked about like, uh, health problem related to it with a family member of his and Uh, whatever else. Uh, brain farting now. I'm kind of, I got my mind on this truck right here, and then our exit is not too far up the road. Uh, uh, we, we rotate this map around for you so you have a closer view there. But anyway, yeah, uh, she had told me he basically works in the film industry, so I kind of wondered if maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, he used to live in L.A., and he does go uh, back and forth between there and L.A., he says, uh, every so often. Um, yeah, so I've kind of figured that he probably has some interactions with celebrities, you know, because of his line of work. But I, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, not like it really matters. The celebrities are just regular people too, for the most part. They're doing a job. Um, ideally, they should be doing a job, but uh, just something they really enjoy doing. But I know there are some of them who just uh, do it for the money and the fame, and they don't. They're not so concerned about the the love of acting. But all right, I've got this black pickup down here on the on ramp. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to watch. Let's go ahead and get moved over. I think he's going to be an issue. Um, so, yeah, I do kind of wonder if maybe he was a little on the reserve side over that issue there. But, yeah, I, and it was interesting because uh, yeah, he didn't really divulge at first what exactly he does in the industry. But then I, uh, I was telling him how a friend of mine, uh, come on, dude, you're going to let me over. Because that could be, if you don't want to, I can always be a dick and just say, uh, this is why I don't move over for a lot of people a lot of times. They don't, they want to be assholes and, uh, not let me come back over, even though I was nice enough to move over for them. So, because that reason, more often than not, I, I'm not even going to waste my time moving over, even though I can. So I get sick and tired of people doing that crap. Um, yeah, anyway, though, um, uh, I ended up finding out that she's a location scout, and, and yeah, I ended up telling him, uh, yeah, well, my, uh, actually, I think I found that out after I told him that, uh, my, one of my friends, um, who runs, who runs, who runs, uh, runs a road rally organization, that's how I know him, uh, that's how we all, you know, he used to do a lot of, uh, his road rallies, and, uh, yeah, we're still friends to this day, uh, he's a location scout, though, and I was telling him about my friend, and, yeah, they didn't know each other, but it was kind of cool having that connection there, I guess. Um, yeah, I was kind of curious about what goes into that world, you know. It's, uh, uh, to me, it'd be kind of fascinating thing what goes into uh, figuring out, like, how do you pick this or that place or for whatever it is you're doing? And, uh, you know, or and how does that, all that work? Like, does the production team or the director or whoever, I guess the production team, pre-production, Come on, dude. Do you really have to do that and slow down to 60 in front of me? Freaking douchebag. All right, right here is our exit, Motel Boulevard. Um, yeah, so there was a whole lot. I mean, forget about the famous people stuff. I just wanted to understand that, you know, that career field, I guess, a little bit better. Because I never really bothered to ask my friend about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. So, I don't know. Might have to have that conversation. 
at some point in time. All right. So we're going to make a right turn right here and then uh, a right turn either onto the side street or directly into the TA. Uh, we're going to have to figure out where that trailer is. Uh, so you guys see me leaning forward like that, if you're a newer trucker, make sure you're doing that kind of stuff. The A-pillar and the mirror here are a big, a big huge uh, blind spot. And it's easy for someone to be over there on foot and you not know they're there. And all of a sudden they start walking across your path. You have no idea. Unless you actually move forward like that and actually look past the A-pillar to, to double check. Okay, I forgot the trailer number that I'm looking for, but I know it's a JCT drop trailer over here, so there's one right here in the corner. Uh, well, yeah, the very first spot right here is a truck hooked up to it, though, so 7498, that might be it right there. Yeah, well, that sounds familiar. Five one four. Uh, no, I, I don't think that's. Yeah, let me double check. Yeah, that's it right there. Well, they said five one eight four. I got this is five one eight three. All right, so we'll just go ahead and back up behind it and. Uh, oh, this is five one eight four. Well, I'm confused now. Which one am I grabbing? Because. The trailer they told me is hooked up to 5183, and the guy I'm parking right next to is 5184, and he's got a different trailer. I was under the impression he wasn't going to be here, though. Yeah, I think this is the guy here. So, yeah, it is it is the trailer that's behind me, not this one next to me. Uh, as we finish uh, all this, what's this guy doing? Oh, he's not even in this truck. He's, out, he's outside uh, doing something with his uh, windows and stuff. Okay, so what actually happened here is the, the driver in this truck next to me, uh, now, originally that truck was the one that was hooked up to the trailer that is behind me. But, uh, yeah, I guess he had just finished swapping tractors around. Uh, yeah, so he hooked the 5184 up to this H3, uh, 30810. And he just put the 5183 um, underneath that one. Didn't actually hook up to it, but he put it underneath it. Yeah, he's going to pull it away now. And I walk up to it and uh, get the bills and pre-trip it and all that crap and it'll be rolling. Ah, yeah, he's pulling away already. Man, that really threw me off. It's like, because they told me, uh, you see right there what uh, what information the, uh, the, the dispatch gave me.
Okay, I don't know if he has the bills or if the bills are in the bill box or whatever. Probably uh, chit chat with him briefly and figure out how this how this whole process works. Cause I'm interest I am interested. I don't know if he's kind of short on time, but oh, I need to uh, raise my bags up. Oh, I got any I don't have pressure yet. Nah, I need I don't I'm not seeing enough pressure on my gauge there. I'm not gonna go back and underneath it until I uh, raise the landing gear or something because I don't trust it. I could have raised my uh, raised my rear right up uh, up above normal to, uh, to do the same thing, but I forgot about it. Uh, yeah, that hooked in. It's a little bit more violent than I wanted it to be, but uh, all right. Uh, let me see how I'm doing on my recaps here. I only get six and a half hours back tomorrow, and I'm only gonna have 11:25 to work with. You know. Screw that, I can't make it all the way. I can't make it all the way to uh, my house tomorrow anyway, so uh, I'm, that's too, I'm too far away, so I'll probably just go ahead and shut down here. Get rolling in the morning, I guess, so. Um, all right, let me finish working out these details with the other guy here. Um, this was supposed to be a little bit, of, I guess, a little bit more of a quick video for you guys. Uh, just FYI, this ought to be going to Americold in Ontario, California. Uh, it's due the 23rd, you know, it's two days from now. There's no way, uh, not with my recaps, there's no way possible for me to get it there on time. Uh, well, not on, I can get it there on time, I just can't get it there until the delivery day, so. And I can't get home until then either, so. Yeah, we'll just bed down here. I don't want to worry about trying to find parking. I already have a good spot here. Uh, not the best spot. I don't like parking around the corner uh, like this, but. All right, anyway. Uh, I will see you guys um, possibly in Ontario on the next one. All right, it's the uh, same place that I just delivered to in a recent vlog, by the way, a couple of weeks ago. All right, so um, all right, you all have a great night. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, all right, we'll see you in Ontario.